This video is dedicated to one of my subscribers who recently unsubscribed and then resubscribed. We had a bit of a thing going on in the comments. I think there was a misunderstanding. Uh, Charlie, and uh, he's been waiting for me to do this review for a while now. So yeah, dedicated to you, mate. I just want to say, whatever you may think of me, you may not always agree with me. This channel is all about the subscribers. Every single person counts. When I lose a subscriber, I get offended by it. Not offended by you, but I get upset with myself. So, just so you know. Anyway, guys, in the uh, below section, I don't even, you know, the bar thing. I don't even know what you call that. I've put chapters in this video, so if you want to just skip to the bits you're interested in, go ahead. Today's topic is the SB3000. I've got notes here, so you might see me every now and again. But it's the SB3000, and uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you why this subwoofer is, I think, one of the best subwoofers um, for households today. So I've already given it away. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no kind of, ooh surprise at the end no twists or anything but here we here we go i'm gonna let you know now so the specs are on the screen now i'm not gonna go through this because i feel like i just waste time with this you can read yeah one thing i will say is about the build quality the finish that you get i'll turn my phone off now good idea for me to turn my phone off because here it is going off again in a review and uh, yeah yeah, one thing I will say about the finish is that you have the black vinyl, you have a black gloss and a white gloss, I believe, with the SB3000. This is the last of the SVS series to feature those three finishes. Above this, so in the 4000 series and above the Ultra series, you only have, I believe, black. So there's no white. And I can only see that as kind of a, a hint that the ones above this are for you know blacked out rooms you know for theater because no one's going to want a white one in a theater so uh yeah just something i observed actually so that tells you that this 3000 is svs's answer to the household and this is kind of the best they intend pretty much for a standard household for a living room if you are considering the sb3000 you might also be looking at the sb2000 pro and in the flesh, there's very little difference between them in terms of size. It's very, very uh, minor, very subtle. But the thing is, when you start knocking on the cabinet, you kind of start hearing the differences and feeling the differences. I feel like the SB3000 feels a little bit better constructed than the SB2000 Pro. So that's that. I'm going to talk to you now about what I liked about the SB3000 subwoofer. But... I'm going to read it from here because I tell you, it's a bit hard doing this. So I'm going to give this a go. So what I liked, I've said here, I tested movies out on this sub as I usually do. And yeah, I put here, it's at the level of my XTZ 1217 Edge for base quantity. So it's about the same as a 12 inch, inch ported sub for base quantity. And when I mean 12 inch ported, I mean take into account the size of the box of the XTZ. Uh, 1270 17 edge as well so it's not a big ported sub but it's it's about average compared to the sb2000 pro there's a lot of difference and on paper it looks like a small difference but remember decibels are logarithmic so every decibel that you know you get an increase of clean power it makes a big difference to what you hear smartphone app obviously as I always say in my videos, it works fine. It's probably the best smartphone app on a phone for a subwoofer that I've come across. I've come across a couple of them, but the SPS, there's nothing wrong with it at all. DSP is your best friend. If you don't have, um, you know, like a treated room or if you have partial treated room, like most people, most people who say they have bass traps don't really have bass traps. You will never be able to... to to trap the bass below 100 hertz. To really target the bass below 100 hertz, you need pressure-based um, bass traps rather than velocity-based. Most people go for velocity-based bass traps and they're not really bass traps. So, uh, sorry to burst your bubble, guys, if you think you have got bass traps. Anyway, um, yeah, that's why DSP helps you, right? So this app is gonna help you with that a lot. I also liked, funnily enough, I like the vinyl wrap 
of the SB3000. I'm perfectly fine with a vinyl wrap on a subwoofer. I find the, the glossy finishes, they attract dust. The white finishes that are glossy, you don't see the dust, but you see reflections. And yeah, I just feel like the, the vinyl wrap is the thinking man's subwoofer finish. Another thing is it is compatible with the SVS sound path feet as well. I found from the in the past that it makes a difference. It's a bit expensive, but if it makes a difference then you only have to buy it once and it's compatible with pretty much all the SVS subwoofers. So, so basically it's transferable. You can put it on other subwoofers from other brands, like it will fit my XTZ, for example. Yeah, then it's worth it, isn't it? If you can apply it in many uses. If you live like in an apartment and it helps to cut the vibrations out of the floor and into the room. So yeah, it's kind of a necessity if you do plan on, you know, putting it on a top floor or flat or whatever. The movies, I tested it as usual. Getting a bit bored of these tests now, but you have to kind of use the same tests. Otherwise you never know, really know where you are. But Interstellar, the base here, I said here, I just wrote the base was there. <laughs> <laughs> Top Gun, the bass was there and there was a bit of finesse as well. So this is very subjective here. Less distortion than the SP2000 Pro. Here you go is what I've written. Yeah, uh, the same goes with the THX. I will be a bit more specific about what I mean there uh, later. And same goes with the THX tra uh, trailer. Compared to the SP2000 Pro, I just felt the overall system cleaned up a little bit when I pushed the volume to where I wanted it to go. There's a feeling of headroom. So it's like basically what I'm trying to say there is it's a very similar performance to the SB2000 Pro, but you've got more sub bass and you've got headroom, a feeling of headroom, which basically means the bass sounds cleaner. And that's important. Okay. Um, and yeah, and this is very appreciated compared to something like the 3000 Micro, which is about 900 pounds in the UK. Um, and it's from the same series as this one and uh, also the 2000 Pro like you really appreciate that now with music here I said here without calibration the subwoofer exposes itself more than the sub uh, than the subs lower down in the range yes yeah, so the SP3000 at first when you plug it in especially if you've got a small to medium sized room you're going to think oh it sounds a bit bloated this is a bit ugh, over the top so first things first, guys, you need to set your delays right to make sure that the, the cone from your speakers and your sub are matched up. And also room correction. Like I said earlier, your room, even if you have bass traps, they're doing absolutely pretty much F all, you know. Even if you think they are, you know, you can measure the pe peaks, they go down a bit, but compared to DSP, it's nothing. And compared to a second subwoofer, which is basically an active bass trap, it's not doing anything compared to that. So, um, and yeah, and who has bass traps in their living room in the world? Do you know many people in a living room? So yeah, it's a living room subwoofer. People always going on about bass traps. Anyway, around 35 Hertz. Yeah, in my room around 35 Hertz and below is when my uh, room gain starts to really kick in with the, with the, um, yeah, sub 35 hertz bass, the proper sub bass, okay? And that's the sub bass that you're gonna hear more in movies, okay? In music, you probably, you know, anything below 80 hertz, you know, 40 to 80 hertz is more common, but in movies, 20 to 40 hertz is all the time. You always hear that. So, um, yeah, what you get in response in a normal room is about six to eight decibels in a normal sized room. When I say normal room, medium room, I mean like my one, which is about 20 square meters. So uh, obviously the bigger the room, the longer the dimensions, the lower room gain you're gonna get, or it's gonna kick in lower, okay? Now, the roll, the roll off slope uh, is built into the SP3000's DSP, uh, is what I wrote here. And yeah, that's to take into account your room gain. So SP, SVS has kind of uh, uh, accounted for that, but if your room needs more of it, there's this thing called a room compensation feature, which you can find in the app. Don't forget what I said, okay? Look in the app, look at the room compensation feature, and you'll probably find that your, your subwoofer automatically, it sounds, oh, it sounds fast now. If you cross over at 80, hold on, I can't read my own writing. If you cross over at 60 or 80 hertz, I highly doubt you'll hear any difference between this and other subs with faster drivers. 
Yeah, that's what I wrote. I mean, the benefit applies more the higher the crossover is, but this is a subwoofer. The job of the subwoofer is to provide clean, deep bass, not just uh, not that 150 hertz mid bass. That should be the job of your speakers. Yeah. So the thing in the industry, you might hear a lot of people go, oh, this subwoofer is really fast. It's fast subwoofer. You know, I find that that is applicable at high frequencies or high, higher bass frequencies. Subwoofers are often crossed over at 80 hertz or sometimes lower, 50, 60 hertz. How fast do they have to be at that range? I mean, 50 hertz, that gives you an indication of how fast they have to be. And typically drivers like the ones in the SB series, the SB3000, that's, that's their like perfect range, like up to about 50, 60 hertz. They're, they are like the kings of that sort of range. Fair enough, there's octaves above that and they're crossed over and whatever, but I just feel like when you want fast bass, I think leave that to the speakers, the, the, the speaker drivers. They're a lot lighter and uh, more equipped for that purpose. I don't think a subwoofer is really, the, it should be the job of a subwoofer to do that. But that's why we have bass modules. If anyone knows bass modules, look them up and you'll see it's a different ca category of speaker to a subwoofer. I think if you have floor standing speakers, the SP3000 is a perfect match. By the way, your floor standards will go down to about 50 hertz easily. Cross them over around there. SP3000 cross, crossed over. That does the rest. And a great thing is you have dynamic headroom, much more than other sealed subs. Down to about 20 hertz, you should be able to get about 100 decibels or a bit more with room gain. That means it will never be a limiting factor when we're talking about 16-bit audio. So your typical stereo 16-bit is the maximum dynamic range. 24 bit yeah obviously you have way more dynamic range but you have more headroom so compared to most subwoofers out there you'll hear the difference things i don't like about the sp3000 so i'm going to read it to you now the price in the uk that's the first one why do we have to pay more for these subs over here so that's one thing um like competitors we have the arundel 1723 1s which is a 13.8 inch driver subwoofer that's about the same price, but the cabinet finish seems to be better quality and maybe it's more living room uh, friendly, I would say. And uh, also there's another subwoofer by REL, the 1508 Predator, which is a 15 inch driver. And at the moment it's like 1299, so it's kind of neck and neck in price with the SB3000. The second thing I didn't like about the SB3000 was the distortion. So uh, I'm quite sensitive to distortion, okay? And in the sub bass region, I think I can pick it up. Um, and yeah, here's the bit where I get my trumpet out and I show off a little bit. Apologize for those of you who are uh, sensitive to that. But the truth is I have absolute pitch, also known as perfect pitch. If anyone knows what this means, it basically means that if I hear a note, I know what the note is, okay? If I hear a note, I'm able to identify the note and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's a B flat, a C sharp or whatever. So there's a song, Mask Off by Future, and uh, that has a low note in that uh, in that song. And it's it's an it's I know it's an A because I've heard this through my uh, PB16 Ultra and through the SB3000. That note, which is about 27 and a half hertz, it's the lowest note on a piano. I'll show you this now, actually. May as well just show you. So uh, here's the piano, guys. This is gonna to be tough to record. The song goes something like this. Goes uh It goes like that, okay, off the top of my head. So. That's how the right hand goes. But the left hand, it goes like this. Um, it goes. It's actually down here, but it goes. That note, there is an A, okay? That note, if you can see, right? But actually, it's actually happening an octave lower than that. So really, it's going like this. And that note is the one, this one here, the lowest note on the piano, that's the note that I can hear, it's distorting. 
because I'm unable to figure out what is that note. On my PB16 Ultra, I hear an A coming through clear, and I know. And sub bass is usually where people with perfect pitch they can't they start kind of stop kind of figuring out like that's the note. So this is the note here. As you can hear, that's very distorted. You might not hear it through this mic, I don't know. But compared to that, which is the same note, an octave higher, that note is, you can't, you, no, no one could tell using these speakers on this Casio piano that that is the note. So I'm saying now, I'm now telling you, when I heard that song, the SB3000, it's kind of like, it takes me a few seconds to process and then I'm like, yeah, I think it's that. The lower in harmonic distortion a sub is, the cleaner that note comes out, the more the fundamental frequency comes out, and the fewer harmonic distortions are introduced into the sound. So, you know, for example, when I play this A, you might have a harmonic distortion. What's related to an A in the harmonic series, you might have a D. They might actually, that D here, is actually in the background it's playing lower level you see so you're hearing the a but you're hearing the d with it and it kind of smears the sound kind of like like that but this d is played low level and that's what basically very simple simplified version of what harmonic distortion is so yeah when people say you can't hear harmonic distortion my argument is you can't hear it but I'm pretty sure I can hear it um, because, yeah, like I said, I mean, I think you, it's a case you can hear it, but you need to be trained to hear it. That, I'm going to, so I keep you up here. The XTZ1217 Edge sounds about the same level as the SV3000, but the XTZ at those lower frequencies, at that frequency of 20 hertz, 30 hertz, it sounds less, dis a little bit less distorted. You know, so, um, yeah, but it's not overly distorted, the SB3000. That's, that's uh, you know, just the truth. You know, it's not overly distorted, but I'm just saying I can hear it. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's that. Yeah, and here we go quickly onto the measurements part of the uh, channel. Now, those of you who watch this channel, I'm a little bit about measurements, but I'm not totally about measurements. And that other channels, they, they buy them the, you know, like the date and audio U mic mics and some better than that, like the bare dynamic ones and stuff. But um, I feel like to understand the charts, one, you need to read them and understand them, which most of my viewers probably don't. And I don't, I don't blame you for that. But also what matters is the final sound. Okay, so that's why I do sometimes binaural recordings if you want to use headphones, you can kind of hear what, what the difference is between stuff. But I think with subwoofers, the measurement data is more important than it is for speakers, which is why I'm going for it now. So according to Audioholics, which is a website I really rate actually, I rate that website, they've got the CEA 2010 burst te test measurements here, and it's confirming what I heard in my subjective tests. And that is 31 and a half hertz is when we start getting that third harmonic distortion. Um, and third harmonic distortion will be about 60 hertz. And I think that's about a, I think that's a B? Let me just check here. I think 60 hertz, yeah, 60 hertz is about a B, right? So there's, there's something like that going on in the background there, um, around that sort of uh, limit at 20 hertz anything up to 30 hertz. So there's a lot of third harmonic distortion, um, well not a lot of, but there's, uh, there's some present in those frequencies to be um, significant, okay? So I'm putting this data on the screen for you now. You can see on the screen that we have more third harmonic, third order harmonic distortion compared to second order harmonic distortion. And uh, I'm guessing that's what I was hearing when, um, I was listening to those uh, those tracks. So uh, group delay is another thing uh, that is important with a sub. Group delay, basically, that's kind of responsible a lot of the time for that feeling of tightness, that transient response that we get with subwoofers. So um, as you can see on the diagram here, which I've taken from Audioholics, if you go and check their website out, 
if you want to know more, obviously. And uh, the SB3000 is the green curve. And uh, they reckon anything below the, uh, the red curve, definitely the 1.5 cycles is pretty much inaudible. Anything below the uh, 20 millisecond mark is pretty much definitely inaudible. And you can see that below the 20 millisecond mark, the green curve, the SP3000 is underneath that 20 millisecond mark for the majority of frequencies. It's only below 35 hertz, hertz that starts to uh, to increase. But the argument is at those frequencies, you're probably not going to hear it. Conclusion and comparison to other subwoofers. So first of all, Arundel 1723-1S. What would I go for? If I've written here, I'd go for the SPS. It's a gut feeling because I think it's a bit shorter than the Arundel. So it's like shorter in height. The Arundel I think is a bit taller. At least the one I've got downstairs is pretty tall. So, uh, but correct me on that in the comments if anyone wants to look up those dimensions. Um, but I remember it being a bit taller. But the other reason is resale value as well. So I put here, if you don't like it, nobody, yeah, if you don't like that subwoofer, if, let's say you bought the Arundel 723-1S, and you end up not liking it, or you want to upgrade, I don't think anyone's buying that subwoofer off you if you do want to change your mind. I think you've bitten the bullet and you're going to be hurt by it if you, if you try to sell it. Um, you know, the SVS, I've, I'm sure it will have more of a market aftermarket for it, a second hand market for it. So you'll be able to shift it. Arundel, they, yeah, they have a 60 day buy and try though. So you do have a chance to send it back if for yourself. Just remember you have to pay the shipping back, which can be quite a lot because it's in Norway. Uh, another one I've mentioned already is the 1508 by Rel, 15 inch driver, 800 watts. And uh, it should be more efficient, the driver, than the 13 inch one in the SVS. Um, you know, that's something, and it's got the same amplification. Uh, it's down to 1299 at the moment in the UK, which is about the same price as the SVS. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about the excursions, about the rail, because their specs are a bit kind of shady. I don't know what they mean. Like, they're, 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 they call it fore and aft um, on their thing. They don't, they don't even talk about linear excursion. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what... To make from it and also svs2 they don't they don't write a linear excursion that's what we want to see more of so that makes sense and you can compare to other uh speaker companies but yeah, with the rel i don't know if you're going to get a dsp with that i don't think you get dsp with the rel 1508 uh correct me again in the comments another one is the kef kf92 which should offer similar performance as their two nine inch drivers um, but it's a thousand watts, so it should offer similar performance to the SP3000, but it's twice the price, pretty much. I'd rather get two subs. I'd rather get two SP3000s than one KF92, and that's without even hearing it. At the end of the day, you take away the volume of the sub, you take away the volume, and uh, yeah, you are damaging the audio quality too. Another one is a Dynaudio 18S. And uh, yeah, that's 1,190 pounds, 500 watts. So probably limited a bit on the excursion there. That's more for studios or small spaces. Not much people, not many people talk about it. There's not much hype, but that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to pro audio equipment versus consumer level equipment. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I'll see you next time, guys.